Hey guys, Henry Mims with Angle and Bocas here. Uh, over here in, in the Atlantic, Florida, beachside over by Melbourne, Florida. Uh, 321 showcasing the Space Coast. We're here at Fifth Avenue Barbershop because you obviously tell my hair is doing something it should not be doing. We're here to find out what the 321 on this barbershop is, showcasing the sp Space Coast, local businesses only. Here we go. Hey. 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 hey! I'm inside here in Fifth Avenue Barbershop. Yo. That's Peter. Hello. That's Brian Lugo, owner and the world's okayest boss. That's right. Yeah. And this is Lokeson. Hey. How you doing? Yeah. And Logan. Hi, yeah. Yeah. All right, so I'm here to find out more about this place. Right, here we go. So. Oh, it's your first image. First time here? Yeah, I'm not here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Set. Ah, uh, this is the normal thing, like in the wedding. You got it. Yeah. Uh, going, Brian? Doing all right, doing all right. Doing all right. Doing all right. So we've been knowing each other for a little while now. Uh, first met you over on downtown. That's kind of where I knew you started, but where did you get started? Uh, first shop I started in O'Malley at a shop that I was just kind of getting getting started. Right. It didn't really work out, so then got the opportunity to start working downtown up there. Right. That's what I'm doing. Ah, that's it. Yeah. And then that's how I met him. Yep. Yeah. That is how you met me. Once you went to Pete, you didn't want to come back to me, so. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that small world and uh, uh, another father that I knew, you tried to do your hand. Uh, Tito. Zito. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, Zito. Zito. I used to do my hair back in high school. Yeah, yeah, it's a small world of it. It is. Yeah, so, and how did you guys get started? I'll start with you. So, uh, what's funny is Brian actually did my hair while I was in high school. Ah, nice. So, and that kind of created like the whole vibe that I wanted. Like, right. I got the whole aesthetic for like the traditional kind of barbering just from the inspiration I got from these guys. Coming to here is kind of what it's a I don't know, it's a good opportunity to be in this space. Yeah, I mean it's a good man to, to learn from and to work with. Sure. And how did you get started? I uh, my dad was a cosmetologist. He did women's hair, so I was in the shop all my life. Okay. And then I had known Garrett, who we used to work with, and he introduced me to barbering, and that's. I needed to find a job, so I, right. I was like, okay, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really cool. That's right. And Peter? Um, so, I worked at a shop in Tiberi's for like six months. And Tiberi's? Then, yeah. I was living in Oviedo. Oh, okay, Apparently, I don't like working where I live, right? Um, <laughs> anyway, I, I finished, gave a shout out, and I talked to some people, and then they pretty much brought me to downtown and that's why I met Brian. And yeah. That was about five years ago now. And yeah, that was about five years ago, because it was next to the job. I had a ready to start working with the job when you guys came in. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. And, and then why did you guys decide to come out to, to Beachside though? I mean, in the Atlantic, but what made you decide to come out to Beachside instead of staying mainland? Um, I, mainly from the support that I've been getting since past Of 
but um, so one of the more interesting things and, and cool things that you've seen as barbers, sitting here in the shop or wherever you're from or what have you. I'm talking to you, brother. <laughs> you're the oldest one of us all. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> So then you taught him what he did to my face. Uh, I'm not responsible for it. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen it, bro. It was no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm not putting my name on nothing, Peter. <laughs> I love you, Peter. Love you too. That's why you didn't make the wedding. Oh, yeah. But, hey, there it goes. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, the haircut and the beard, guys. <laughs> Relax. Yeah, now we're doing really awesome time. I know a lot of people uh, from the wedding and just from word of mouth from me that have come to the shop and they follow you or they follow you just because of what happened at the wedding. Um, and that was a, I think that was a huge moment because at the wedding it was supposed to be close to 200 people. Well, it got, because of COVID and all that other stuff last year, year and a half ago, um, a lot of people dropped out. So all that was left was close to family and family basically. Um, but with that, they saw, and you know, people were asking, hey, who can you up? Hey, who did this? And it was so cool to see how many people knew you and how many people knew him. And they were like, oh, yeah, you got it. And they're like, yeah, you know, and it's one of those things that I, not to sound chauvinist or anything, but it's one of those things where most men, if they had a guy, you know, if they already have a guy. And they, they'll pick another guy whenever that guy goes away somewhere, you know, because sometimes people meet and whatever. How much have you seen the influence of what it is that you guys do coming back from the fall and all those types of things? Like, how much of your business would you say is word of mouth? I'd say about 90%. Yeah? yeah. That's, that's awesome. So, I mean, that's just, that's just that you know that people believe in you guys so much that they say, hey, you gotta go see this guy. Like, when I tell people, I say go see Brian, because, you know, if they go see Peter, I'm kidding. I'm joking. All right, all right. I tell them to come to you. I tell them not to mention my name. You must not like them very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, so. so when the guy, how do you want to start? Uh, so where do you envision things going in the future as far as this stuff? 
you, you imagine staying here, or do you imagine getting bigger, or is it about the size you want it to be? I'm just not going to. So I, I'll go as a girl. Wow, that's right now, I have great guys around me. I thank you for you know, being a part of this. I appreciate right. these boys. And if it calls for a bigger shot, then we'll go for a bigger shot. But I would like to stay on this side. That's a nice spot, and you can drive down there. So for lunch, you can go and do whatever. Yeah. I have a shop, because one of my shops is in Lebanon, uh, on the left one. And then the other one is by the on beach side. So whenever I go there, I have to drive all the time. I mean, this is one of the biggest intersections in the Atlantic community. Mm -hmm. So I'm a perfect spot. Perfect spot. I mean, and then you have to drive by the road, too, because you want to drive the map, because you don't have to go right down there and be done. What is something that you guys, and I want to hear from each one of you, that you wish people knew when they were going to get a haircut? Like, I was a fine dining waiter for a while, so there were a lot of things that I was like, it's only in you. You know what I mean? We'll call them one. <laughs> <laughs> Walkings are not a thing anymore, guys. <laughs> for me right, right now. now. Rest. <laughs> so well, I'm alive. sorry. <laughs> for, for, for Ronnie, but we'll call mine. <laughs> Don't stand on the footrest, maybe? Yeah. Uh, or, yeah. or, how about no product before a haircut? Yeah. No product before a haircut. Don't stand on the foot rest. Take a shower. <laughs> what? Take a shower. Take a shower. That's a big one. Yeah. Okay. Take a shower. Don't stand on the foot rest. What was the other one? Take a shower. Don't stand on the foot rest. And call Henry first. Call him. Ah, I like it. Family. Uh, yeah. uh, All right. I think that if one of the things that I, as a, as a freshman, one of the things that I love about you guys more than I love about any other place I've been, really, is that I've seen, okay, because like my friends, my couple of friends, they all look completely different. You will never, there are some people who think, well, you'll never be my friend, and then you see me chilling with them at the mall, and they're like, oh, wait a minute, you know? Um, and that is one of the things I've always loved about coming to this shop and wherever you guys have been is that you'll see the people with the mohawks and you'll see the people with the clean cut and where they live in the law firm. And you'll see all these different types of people. So what is it from your perspective that allows you to be like, hey, come one, come all, and just come and just chill without, you know, without, there are some other shops I think that are a little pretentious, and I can be honest and say that. Yeah. But when you walk in, you feel like you don't belong. Mm -hmm. I've never met anybody that walked in here and didn't feel like they belong. You know what I mean? So what is it that you guys have experienced in your life that allowed that to translate into what you're doing now? What you said, uh, for example, uh, I went to a barber shop when I was younger. You know, we went to get a haircut and my mother's barber was doing his uh, equipment properly. Right. And uh, it kind of worked me out and I walked out. So I always said to myself, if I ever a barber, I didn't know I was going to be a barber. Right. But, I would never do it with somebody. You know, same thing with how you feel when you walk in. I think it's important for somebody to feel welcome when they walk into the business. Right. Especially like that's why I like keeping my windows clean and don't people run into them. It's because <laughs> the dirty mirrors just tell me that you don't care about. It's the first thing the customer sees. They're about to pull we'll open the door, they see him and they're all over the place. Uh, this guy's gonna clean his windows. It's all in the little details. It's all in the little details. So making people feel welcome is very important. Right. A haircut can suck as long as they feel happy in your chair. Right, right. And I've been like a right? I'm a repeater, I've experienced that quite a bit. So. Example. <laughs> <laughs> Exhibit A. You two at home can see this right now. Nah. No, I'm not going to lie though. Whenever. So, real funny story about how I met Peter to begin with. Okay? So, I I was going I was going on a date with this girl, right? And so she was not very happy with my unruly look at the time. Because at that point I had just been like, I'm just gonna let everything grow out. I don't care, whatever. And I meet this girl and I'm like, okay, you know. And then months go by, we kind of link up again. And then she's like, I'm like, hey, let's go on a date. She's like, okay. So we went on a date now. So I went and got a haircut. That's how I first went into a barbershop over on Beach Side. I mean, not Beach Side, uh, downtown. So when I went down there, the reason why I went there was to get cleaned up and my hair cut, right? Mm -hmm. That 
haircut that, that you gave me mm -hmm. is the one that she shows me every single time that she wants me to come and get a haircut when I'm married. Which is why you ended up doing the thing, because you were, I guess we joke you're the reason she kept me around. <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, but you never know how many, you never know how many of those moments you're gonna have where the person that's coming in, they're getting ready for that big drop. Yeah. That that the wedding, the, that big day, that girl they never thought they would get. That all of that stuff. And then now they get it. Because I'm not gonna lie, when I get a headset, I walk around. Like I, I know everybody's looking at me, and I'm like, I know you know. Like I feel like a film, you know? Yeah. And that's an amazing thing, and you can't, I've, I've seen people do it for homeless people, I've seen people do it for, uh, you know, uh, uh, people who are maybe going through a hard time, cancer patients, all these different types of stuff. Um, are there any things that you would like the people to know that you contribute to, or maybe help out with, or, um, or like if you do weddings, or anything like that? Uh, it's all part of the plan, for sure. I would love to be more part of the community as a, as a shop or individually. And um, yes, we do weddings. I would like to do more of a, of a wedding, what would we call it? Uh, like a bachelor party. Like kind of like a wedding party kind of deal. Yeah. And that would be kind of cool. So that way they can come in, hang out with their homies, get a fresh cut before the wedding. Yeah. Maybe a couple beers, maybe not. <laughs> Yeah. I felt like a nickel. You what? I said, depends who, who's listening. <laughs> well, who's listening to you? Maybe not? Yeah. Okay. So now I absolutely can't hear anything. And I can't see anything either. Wow. I just need to take over. Alright, so. <laughs> oh, uh, what is it that you like about Henry the most? You know? He's a really good looking guy. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's pretty tall. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of looks like Ben Affleck. You know? You know what's funny? We went to uh, go see Teddy Swims um, in Sanford for an event, and he was he loves Teddy Swims for an Love event. Teddy Swims. Oh, now you can hear. Yeah, he threw it back on. He threw his. his oh, okay, 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 my bad. <laughs> he, he read. <laughs> he, like he read from my lips Teddy Swims, and he's like, "Oh hell." At the bathroom. Um. Oh man, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, oh, I was, I was pretending to be security. <laughs> People actually bought it, by the way. It was hilarious. And then he was like, oh, I get mistaken for riding on this all the time, so you could just let me go by. <laughs> I was like, oh, I got you, buddy. <laughs> I can see it. So, you know, people think I look like Ryan Reynolds. And Ben Affleck. It's true. Usually they're drunk and in the smoky room. Yeah. But I still pull it off. I'm different. But I got to meet Teddy Swim, and I was so happy. I was as happy as could be. And then when, as time went on, I mean, I went all the way to the phone, and I was like, oh, I'm going to meet this guy, do all this stuff. And he then I totally fangled. Yeah, he touched his hand. I touched his hand, <laughs> or he touched my hand. That's right. He reached for me. That's right. <laughs> so, I, uh, so I got, you know, I, I touched his hand. I totally fangled about it. And then... Um, I'm not ashamed. And so then I later on after after the show, which phenomenal show by the way, we went and I was like, I'm gonna meet this guy. So he's walking and Kelsey there, Danielle's there, and we're walking because you know it's a free show, everybody's just kinda walking around. We go and I see his bus where he's attached to the truck. And I see him and I'm like, oh I'm taking pictures of him through the windows. I'm there, like again, fangling, right? Who comes out? Teddy Swim. And I'm like, oh snap, I'm going to meet Teddy Swim. So he talks to a few people, and then he talks to me. And I'm like, okay, so I, I don't even know how to control it. I'm like, oh my god, this is Teddy Swim, you know? But if you, if you don't know who he is, you need to check him out. Baby making, like baby making music? Phenomenal. So I meet him, and then while I'm talking to him, he keeps asking me my name. But I'm there, and I don't know what he's saying, and I'm talking. So I'm like, I don't know. So after the whole thing is over with, I'm looking at it. And I'm like, oh man, he keeps going, hey man, what's your name? Hey man, what's your name? And I'm just blah, 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 blah. So afterwards, I'm kind of like, ah, so I thought it would be a great idea to make TikTok videos and tag Teddy Swims in it and be like, my name is Henry in the caption. It hasn't worked. <laughs> so if you know how to reach out to Teddy Swims, 
It's really a salad, okay? It's not a menu in the center. Okay. It might not seem like hot to blue, but it's pretty good though. Oh, nice. Yeah, so. Hmm? It's so nice. Yeah, it's really nice. Uh, can I put the hair back in or no? No, well, let me do this part and you can put it back in. Alright. Remember that time you accidentally cut my beard off? <laughs> yeah, we don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> she asked me to cut my beard off, and then my wife blamed me. She said that I did it on purpose, and I said no, I didn't do it on purpose. But she kept messing with me so much, and I was like, listen, I was like, you don't stop, I'm gonna have to come back. She said whatever. So the next morning, I don't have any hair on my face, right? So the next morning, she was telling me I feel like I'm like, like so much, you're so much younger or whatever. So that I right, whatever. So we're sitting down to eat. And we just come up and she goes, okay, my name is so-and-so, what can I get to start with or whatever, and she orders a drink. And so I found that as my defining moment, by the way, guys, don't ever do this, okay? Um, so I found that as my shining moment. She turned to me, the waitress turned to me and said, what would you like to drink? So I looked at Danielle and I said, mom, can I have a Coke? Can I? Can I? And Danielle just went, what? <laughs> and the waitress looked over at Danielle like, can you? And I was like, oh. <laughs> I have not looked at that now for the rest of my life. <laughs> right. so, I mean, she looks super young as well, so the way she probably could have needed she was my mom, but it was like, I thought it was today. Have you guys had any moments like that? Does that bitch shave my beard? No. The what? Does that bitch shave my beard? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> you're I was trying to clean up, is what I was trying to do. You're special. Yeah, I, I, I was trying to try to clean up a little bit, and I kind of blamed Peter in the process. Yeah. Which she doesn't believe to this day. I tried to pull it off, but it just didn't work. So. It used to be Peter's fault, but now it's Rodney's fault. It's Rodney's fault. <laughs> <laughs> you your bumping now for real? No. Lou does your bumping. I'm just kidding. Not that he does a bad job. He does a pretty good job. Uh, I just, you know, I like Brian. He's got gentle hands. I have gentler hands. <laughs> Henry, I still need you to be blind, blind though. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. It's okay. That's good. So what do you guys have coming up for the rest of the year? Are you guys doing anything? I'm going to a bunch of festivals and concerts. I'm going to the Daytona Rockville. I'm going to Stickman, Holly Buzz. I'm going to all that stuff. Are you guys doing anything? What about the rest of the members? Do what? Red Hot Chili Peppers? Where are they I would love to go see Red Hot Chili Peppers. They're coming. Where? Like for real? Yeah. Because uh, I think they'll be the last one. They're last? I think so. Maybe the last I one. Would I, love, I would love to go see Red Hot Chili Peppers. Can I get tickets? You know who I was looking forward to seeing and I'm never going to see them again? Is uh, Food Fighters. They lost their drummer. Yeah. Oh. He's a dish. <laughs> <laughs> so, but when you're out, I made a terrible joke. We're just gonna move on <laughs> from it, though. Uh, I'll tell you later. But, uh, for the sake of the podcast, too soon. For the sake of the podcast, too soon. Very much too soon. Thanks for bringing that up. Was that like out this morning or something? No, just the when he was out there. You didn't no, know. They, uh, oh, yes, like two days ago. No. We'll, we'll talk about the thing that's not how they talk about. So. so do you guys have family? Do you have... I, uh... Right now, I just have my wife. Okay. I have an uncle and aunt, but... And then oh. you got back from the honeymoon? Mm, I don't count it, but yeah. He's, he's also expecting... <laughs> No. A German Shepherd. A German Shepherd. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me... Well, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I got married to a German Shepherd. What? <laughs> no, no, no. no. His wife has a German Shepherd back at home. Oh, okay. And I said he's expecting, and then I paused, and then said German Shepherd. Oh, okay. So, but <laughs> so how long have you been married? Um, only maybe a month and a week. Oh, congratulations, man. Thank you, buddy. Congratulations. Where'd you meet them? Uh, so the guy we used to work with, Garrett, is she's uh, part of his family. Oh, and I've okay. known him all my life. So. Okay. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, oh, I remember Garrett. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, real good. Yeah, so good. I remember him from over downtown and then down over here when he was right down the street. Yeah. Ah, I said, what about you? 
What about you? Is your family or? Yeah. I have a daughter. You don't know? <laughs> <laughs> what? Me call a song? No. Say, say something about it. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to move on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on on this one. All right, all right. Yeah, I have, uh, I have family here. Uh, yeah, I have my grandparents and my uh, my parents, uh, my brother and sister are not here, but uh, I still have a lot of family up in uh, Washington State, like my aunt, and uh, I have a bunch of uh, just like family friends and stuff out there too. So I don't really visit out there much anymore, but uh, it's a cool area. Oh, nice, nice. So uh, everybody, so were you born in Mexico? Yeah. Were you born in Mexico? No. Born Puerto Rico, raised in Puerto Rico. Ah, so how long ago did you move here? 2005. Oh, so you might as well, I mean, I'm, I'm halfway Comberian and halfway Puerto Rican. Comberian? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> did he say half Comberian? Oh, <laughs> oh half Comberian, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, I cannot see the Bulgarian. Same Comberian. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can see that. Uh, so, and then. And you've been here basically your whole life? Basically, yeah. I moved here when I was like basically five years old. So. It's amazing how much everything, because we moved here back in 2007, 2008, and it's amazing how much has blown up just in the last, like, just the last 10 years. Yeah. And they're thinking about uh, the supposedly going to be building the Emerald Shores or whatever it is, that water park, water... Have you heard about it? No. I heard of uh, Margarita, though. I don't know, that's a restaurant. I thought it was a hotel. It could yeah. be a hotel. Maybe it's a hotel. It's a hotel. It's a hotel slash Margaritaville. Bold, I think, everything. Where? Oh, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, on the boardwalk thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, that would be so sweet. I was talking about like the water. What is it called? And we'll. I don't know. I'm oh, going to find out what it is. Yeah, I'll have to look it up. It's like a water park thing. Area. It's supposed to be, you know, yeah. Palm Bay. And Palm City? Yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to, it's supposed to be this. I thought it was, uh. I would Google right now if I had my phone. Emerald know. City? Huh? Emerald City? It might be Emerald City. I thought it was going to be like a big, uh, community, a lot of houses and apartments and stuff. That might be. I don't know too much about it. I just know that it's supposed to be building, it's supposed to be a huge water lagoon thing. And it's supposed to be like a beach in that community. Yeah, wow. I don't know. But yeah, all that kind of stuff is crazy. Like, who would have thought Mims, for example, is blowing up? Rockledge is hot as can be. How do you all those in here? It's just that blowing up like crazy. crazy. That was real special. Yeah, and then over by where we live, which is over by Heritage Parkway, that whole area completely blew up. Mm -hmm. It's with subdivisions and all that stuff. It's been crazy. Now, stop. Did you guys see the space shuttle launch the other day? Was it SpaceX? No. <laughs> I've been here so long that I still find it, I, I can almost tell who is not a local. Some people say, last night there was a huge boom. We don't know what it was. And I'm like, I ain't not from here. I was probably, I said, oh. You good? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So where do you got So when you when you were downtown and everything happened with COVID and everything started kind of closing down and whatnot, um, I noticed that especially in this area, the community was very tight. You know, restaurants were helping each other. I mean, business, local businesses were just helping each other and doing stuff like that. So when the COVID happened, obviously there was a lot of there's a lot of contact when you're above it. You know, you're right here. You can't do it on the Zoom. So what did you guys do to get around that? And does any of that still carry to this day? Uh, there was nothing that they've done at that point. They had to wait. But I did, uh, I did start my own uh, farm. I grew a bunch of vegetables and I got chickens now. That's going to go on. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, there's no what you get when you put a barber inside the house and nothing else to do. Yeah. All right. We couldn't work. 
We couldn't touch that. We couldn't that work for a little bit. There's nothing. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I don't know, it's just, so, uh, so when the guys got back out and we started doing things, like I noticed the barber shop down there. So That's when we started with Gary, yeah. Yeah. Because then that barber shop, and then, and, uh, so uh, do you guys, having experienced that, do you guys think that there's better preparation? So if something like that would have happened again, do you already uh, put yourself in a better position than you might have been when that happened? Because that came out of nowhere, to be honest with you. I feel like if it you know? were to happen again, I think we'll be more ready and or more mentally prepared for something like that. Or right, right. Because I know I've been putting my money away more. Yeah, and and I, I would hope everybody else, because everything was going fly high, you know? It was like, oh, it's going to happen, and then COVID hit. It was bam. It was done and over. Nobody just like, no. Yeah. Uh, did you guys watch the Oscars last night? Oh. No, dude. Did you, did you, did you, did you, that is so fake, man. No, dude, that's fake. fake. I don't think so. No, no. I think it was. You think it's fake? It's staged I, for ratings, bro. Don't okay, no, Oscars, Oscars, was, that's my theory. No, Oscars was going down. Yeah. Nobody was really watching it anymore. And like, nobody, nobody, was nobody knew it was about. last night. I didn't know it was last night until the news came out. He died. He slapped them. Like, man, it was fake. Those guys are good at what they do, man. Especially yeah. Will Smith. Especially Will Smith. <laughs> Didn't he get an Oscar last night? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then 20 he... minutes later, they give him a... Uh, if he's, he looked legitimately pissed. I think, personally, uh, Will Smith... I, I, I think that message was for the crowd to just understand that that's some serious shit. People uh, taking it lightly. I think it comes from the fact that people make fun of him all the time for the shit he's been through. See, one of my things that I was thinking when I first saw it, kind of touching on what you guys were just saying, when I first saw it, the first thing I do is I read body language, because I can't tell what's going on as far as words. And what it looked like to me is, when you, like for example, when you watch Saturday Night Live, you automatically, just the way they position their bodies and stuff, body language, you know a skit's about to happen, or it's you're in the skit, you know what I mean? And so a lot of things, like when people do pranks on TikTok and whatnot, I already know, just based on body language, that the other people are in on, you know? And when Will walked up on the stage and he was walking, you could tell that Chris, especially when Will went to go hit him, Chris reacted a little bit early. And I was kind of like, oh, it's about to, bam, done. I didn't, I didn't know what was gonna happen. But my thing is, they were friends for so long. And then all of a sudden, Will Smith has this image of not being a manly man, whatever that means, but a manly man to the whole thing that happened with Jada. And I thought that was kind of like maybe his way of trying to redeem himself. Or trying to make the Oscars more exciting now, or what? I don't know. I, I, I think he's got a lot of confidence in himself. I don't think it has to do with anything with that. Because uh, later on, I saw him up there, it looked like he was breaking down on um, when he accepted that award for. Uh, it's kind of shitty what he went through, for sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? What was the award he accepted? For, uh, for being in the movie, uh, being Serena Williams' dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That movie? So, Serena and Venus? And then he was up there. And didn't that look like he was breaking down? Yeah. But he was crying and he was like, no, nah, I thought he was, I thought he was. I didn't watch it. Watch it. Yeah, I didn't watch it. I only found out this morning what happened. And I looked at it, I was like, wait a minute. And I looked at it, I was like, wow, that's kind of. But you know, when you have this perception where you have to be on all the time, I mean, how, how long can, can you last doing that? I couldn't do it. Yeah. I couldn't do it. I mean, I have a hard enough time walking down the street trying to beat people off, you know? I couldn't imagine being Will Smith in China. No. Well, Peter is used to it. <laughs> no. Peter is not used to it? Okay. Yeah. Did you make him pretty? Hmm? Not yet. Still got to work on the top. Okay. So, Brian, what is your favorite hairstyle? And this is for everybody. What is your favorite haircut that you've ever had? You can't say the one you got now. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the that favorite haircut you've ever had in your whole life. I used to have a mom when I had hair. Right. What was it? Mom. Nice. And who did the mom? I did it myself. How high was it? It was pretty damn high. And I used to go to use this wax because there was no good hair product back then. How did you, how did you keep, because I always wondered how the people with the tall mohawks kept the mohawk in blue. I heard blue, like Amish blue, like school blue. Really? Yeah, that's old school punk, like, product. Uh, well, one day, we'll have a mohawk again. 
do it like do it on Twitter. I don't think uh, you can take over, buddy. I don't think it's gonna happen for me. I'll do a, a back hawk. I don't know what to call it. You know what? You can get the back hawk. I'll get the top hawk. We'll walk together. We'll be like the yin and yang. So. Yes. And we just stand right next to each other, and then mine will stick out from the back and into your face. Yours is gonna be like sticking from the front, <laughs> and we each other completely. That's what we'll do. You guys just compliment each other, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's it. Uh, what was your favorite haircut you've ever got? He was bald. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I don't know about that. <laughs> Sexy beast. <laughs> For sure, the viewer. Is that Johnny? You look like you mean business in that picture. I had to. I had to. Otherwise, I don't look good. I have to look mean. If I'm bald, I have to look mean. <laughs> I can't be nice. I think that's an unwritten rule, though. If you're bald, you got a mean mug everywhere. Did you write the bald book or no? 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 Okay. What was your favorite haircut you ever had? Uh, I had a mullet uh, about a year and a half ago. It was my favorite haircut I had. Oh, thanks. I'm not sure what year it is. Did you cut the mullet? No. I thought your favorite haircut was that. The one I gave when he was 15. I also had like the, the sides flopped and I had four. Uh... <laughs> I mean, he was, he was cool back then. He was what? He was cool back then. Oh, okay, so that, that's okay. What he means is I was not cool back then. No, oh, he was cool. Uh, he was a cool kid. Bloody emo cut. It's the cool kid. Yeah, I had like the ball fade. Like it's, all it's, it's the way to the top. Really? hair, like right? down here. Oh, so you cleaned it, cleaned it. Yeah. I did my best. And if you, if you act it up, just a little nick here, man, just to show that he is the boss. Yeah. What's your favorite haircut? My favorite haircut. Um, and you don't have to say it, Ryan. You don't have to say it. Right? I, I do say actually. I, I do actually have to say it. I don't want to get fired. Oh. Uh, no, uh, so <laughs> when I had this mohawk, and it was like, I had some designs on the sides and I had some blonde going. I thought that was pretty cool just because of the contrast of the colors. Right. And, and like, I, I normally like to have a haircut that like, not a lot of people have. I like to be a little bit different. Right. Um, so that's probably it. So out of all of you guys, who would be the best person to dye hair? Well, to dye? He's licensed. I'm not licensed for it. He's licensed. Licensed. Like he's not licensed, right? So these two guys would be the best one for if we ever get to do colors. Okay. I know how. I just it's not something I do every day. So. We'll have to practice them all together. Yeah. I'll let you practice on me. Hey. Okay. You can. He was talking. Settle down. Unless. <laughs> uh, so do you guys have books? Of the like the profile, I like say, uh, like, I say we log everything mostly on the internet, Instagram, like Instagram, Facebook. Yeah, I've seen a lot of the stuff that you guys have on uh, Instagram and stuff like that. So, what is your Instagram for people that don't know? Uh, I look at Barber. I look at Barber. Peter. What's, uh, your, hmm? what's your Instagram? Uh, I'm looking it up because I, I mess it up all the time. Oh yeah, it is Peter the Barber ninety one on, on IG. Uh, there you can see all my haircuts. All you know, you can book there. There's a link in the bio. I just kind of took over, but that's okay. I'll, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Jeez, how about you, oh, what's your Instagram? Cuts underscore loading. Cuts underscore loading. 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 Okay. And then mine is uh, Wushu the Barber. Wushu. Did he say Luffy the Barber? <laughs> it might as well have. Wushu. Might as well have. Wushu. Wushu? Mm -hmm. Wushu the Barber. I got you. It's hard to read lips when the lights are coming behind you. I got you. Yeah, fair. So, with the advent of. So, that kind of leads me to the next thing. One of the things that's happened that's blown up in the, in the past five, ten years is, uh, you know, social media, all those types of things. How much do you see social media leading the way as far as, you know, word of mouth and you have advertising and marketing and all these things that people do? Back in the day, you had the yellow pages, you had uh, flyers and stuff like that. How much more do you see with the... Hold on one second. 
once again, and now we have to do the beer stuff again. Yeah. Just want you to see it. All right, we're good. Yeah, that's good. Uh, How much do you see um, social media taking over all those other older forms of advertising marketing, as opposed to, like I say, uh, sponsored things like that? Do you just guys, do you guys just post on Instagram and Facebook, and that's it? You don't do any sponsored, or how much engagement do you get from that when you do it? I, I say in this time at least it's word of mouth is the most powerful marketing tool. Right. But besides that, um, social media works really great for people to be able to find you on, on the go or quickly. Right. Uh, they're looking for a local barbershop, you know. That's why it's good to use the hashtags like hashtag Melbourne and hashtag MMA barbershops and all that stuff, that way people can type it in and it pops right up. That way, yeah, there's your work, there's your link to what you do, what you do. Right. It does help, but I say in this time, mostly we get uh, people talking about it. Right. Uh, from their experience with... Mm -hmm. uh, always so. so how much of uh, so when you... So when YouTube came with them, because I know they've known each other for a while, like, as you said before, like the guys are downtown. So when YouTube came, you already knew of him. Yeah. How did you know of him? Uh, I worked with Brian and Garrett in the last shop we were in at. In the last shop. Yeah. And then you've known Garrett pretty much the whole while. Yeah. And so Garrett and I were together in a shop before that shop also. Okay. So I've been in two shops with Garrett, now uh, two shops with Brian. Okay. Yeah. And okay. Peter was only Saturdays, but he was there. Okay. Yeah, that's right, because you were over in Sanford, right? Yeah, yeah. I was in Sanford yeah. at the time, yep. Ah, uh, sweet, sweet, sweet. So what are you guys doing in your off time? Because I know you guys are here, but six days a week almost? So what are you guys doing in your off time? Five days a week? Oh yeah, it's like off Sunday month. Okay. So what are you guys doing in your off time? Uh, Sunday to Monday. What's that? Off time when you're not working? Yeah. Oh, you don't have that? <laughs> <laughs> what do you just, do? Just <laughs> <laughs> I guess the regular routine that comes down to that. Yeah. yeah. Just being a dad, I guess. The daily, the daily routine. You know? All right. Long yeah. time congratulations again, bud. Thanks. I sleep when I can, you know? All the managers. You said what? I sleep when I can. Oh. Uh, I can imagine having, being that age and having a baby. How old are you? 29. Okay, I was having a baby for you. You thought you were 10, bro. Not that I thought you were a lot older. I did. Alright, and what about you? What do you do? Uh, nothing really. Pretty much just chill in the house or uh, go out with my girlfriend. Nobody serves? Nah, I'm too scared. I got messed up knees, so I can't really do much anymore. Oh, that's Sammy. Yeah. What? He's got messed up knees. Uh, yeah, messed up knees. <laughs> Different reasons. Messed up yeah. knees. Oh, messed up knees. Yeah. See, at first I thought you said he liked Master P, and I thought that had nothing to do with this. He might like Master P. <laughs> do you like Master P? What? He's actually probably way too young for Master P. Way too young for Master P. Okay, I have a question for you, just out of curiosity. Okay. Do you listen to rap or hip hop? Yeah. Okay. Who, in your opinion, is the best rapper? Probably Dre. Dre. Dre? Dr. Dre. Oh. Okay. Okay. Alright. <laughs> what are you doing? Looking at the viewers at home. This is a recording. Oh, yeah. But when you put it out, uh. it'll be viewers at home. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was like a live film. <laughs> so you think Dre is the best rapper of all time? Of all time, I'd probably say Biggie is probably the best rapper of all time, in my opinion. I can rap. I can be with it. What about you, Lisa? Me? Yeah. Uh, hip hop, rap, or whoever. And you can't say Pitbull. <laughs> can you say Mr. Worldwide? Then I don't have an opinion. No, because every Puerto Rican I've ever asked, my wife is Puerto Rican, I'm like, who's the best rapper, singer? And they're always like, Pitbull. I'm like, no. I don't know what kind of Puerto Ricans hanging out, but it ain't Pitbull. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's from Miami. 
Puts together, and I mean, he's he's fast. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, at least for me, as far as impact on life, like growing up, like that was it. Like, I, I listened to uh, like Ludacris and a few other people, but like Eminem, as far as like some songs for me, I was just like, that was my workout, that was my workout song, that was my wake up song, that was my go to bed song, you know what I mean? When he came out of the scene, he blew everybody away in the 90s when I was growing up, and it was like, it was such a transition from Nirvana and everybody else. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, the rap game started coming around. Dre was coming with Snoop Dogg and stuff, but then Eminem popped out of the scene, and it was just, bam, full force without even, like you remember, it was, it was just uh, absolutely in the late 90s and early 2000s, it was just crazy. It was just the way it took over everything. So, uh, hold on. <laughs> Not anyway. When were you born? 99. 2000. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. So, so you were around. During, okay. So you were around during the the crazy rap. Well, not crazy rap, but but like everybody does. I can't even understand them. What is it? Oh. I, you gotta let me know these things. I can't do the buzzer. <laughs> but you went. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been accident number two with Danielle. Uh, Another thing they wish you know is not to move while they're shaving your beard. Yes, <laughs> don't, don't move. Don't look in the mirror if you're not facing the mirror. That's it. Uh, yes. uh, yeah. That's it. Alright, I'm not gonna move. I, I can talk without losing my lips. It's just still up the party. So are you guys going to take any more training or anything to learn how to do? What would you want to know how to do as far as besides being a barber? <clears throat> Let's say barber did not exist. What would you want to do? I think uh, cybersecurity is interesting. Security? Cybersecurity. Ah, oh, nice. I think it's interesting. Yeah. Bartender. Bartender? Uh, I think something like either like carpentry or like, I don't know, something maybe with an engine. That way like, I know like, it's gonna be around. Like, yeah. Like so Yeah, yeah, like hands on and stuff. Yeah. What about you? Tattooing. Tattooing. Yeah. Uh, I wanna, I wanna get another tattoo so bad, but I'm, I'm afraid to die to take blood thinner time because my heart. I like, I don't wanna bleed all over the tattoo on it. You know, sometimes in life you just gotta go low. I'm not gonna tell them nothing. And I'm gonna be like, it's all you. And then I have to do my tattoo for free. I'm not gonna see this video. That's an evil plan. So if they see this video, they'll, they'll have proof right there. <laughs> Dude, really? Alright. Okay, so I, I think I'm gonna have to edit this part of the video out. Uh, <laughs> Don't eat it! You can't put it on man. That's good for you. I got the edge to lift my lips, and I don't know why. Wait, wait. I got to do the other side. Okay. Might as well wait. Don't lift your lips. He's <laughs> <laughs> trying so hard. I can't help it when I'm around him. <laughs> <laughs> I do Give so me good. the fever! <laughs> See, I love having a beard, but I don't like kissing with the beard when it's like grown, because then it goes up your nose. <laughs> yeah. then, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's kind of like, oh. And then they think you're making the face because of them, and they're busting their teeth for five minutes, and they're just like, <laughs> And like, it's not you, it's me. It's me. Yeah. <laughs> they're not a baby. Nope. But after that. 
So what is your most horrible experience being a barber? You don't have to mention any names. Just out of curiosity. Most horrible experience. Horrible. Horrible. Like the most horrible experience you've had as a barber. Not getting cut, but as a barber. Whoever wants to go first. Yeah. Can I know as a waiter, I can list off the top 10 most horrible. Like if I see them out in public, I'm like, I know about you. Yeah, yeah I do. And they won't make eye contact, because they know. They know that I know. <clears throat> I say when somebody tried to tell me how to cut hair, and that usually doesn't work. It's either trust me or no. Ah. Simple as that. Either you get it or you don't. Don't tell me how to do it. Especially when you know how to do it, and they tell you how to do it. Well, I don't really know how to do it, but the point is, don't tell me what to do. Right. <laughs> you don't learn today, so. <laughs> What's your most horrible experience? How the barber? This one time, this mom came in. I was supposed to cut her son's hair. Little kid, like two, three. But he was asleep in the car in his car seat. She didn't want to wake him up. So she asked if I could come to the car and cut his hair in the car. Oh, wow. So I did it. Mm. And that uh, was bad. <laughs> 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 you can't make me laugh with the way on my face. Just the way that I waited on it. Right. <laughs> Remember the, uh, okay. He's all the way in the back seat, the, the furthest back seat. Turned around. Was it in a van? It was in a van. She took oh, off the oh. seat, put the seat down. I had to get in there. I'm on my knees like this around the kid in the, in the seat. I'm getting Charlie horses. I'm having to stretch my leg out I'm like this. It's crazy. Wow. I hope she took you crazy. I don't think so. It's not that memorable. Huh? But <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't that memorable. What's the most horrible one for you? Uh, I had a client that basically made me like do like three different haircuts on him. Did you make him do three different haircuts on you? Hey, listen, man, you gotta learn. <laughs> Who? He said. Well, he said one time he had to do like three different haircuts on one person. Oh, but really? If he's not satisfied, if they're like, oh, that's like why it, communication a little higher. Speed. That's why yeah. the consultation is like huge. You but know they're mean? like three separate consultations, like. Well, well that's, up, why, like, that's why three you different got... images of Brad Pitt, and he's like, I want to look like this, and he's like, wait, I want to look like this person. Yeah, yeah, you know, you, you don't cut it until you know what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? He may have shown you three different pictures, but, you know what I mean? Yeah. You got to narrow it down before you start cutting it. Yeah. yeah. Way, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm sure he knows that lesson now. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to bring him a picture. And I'm going to buy him a Uh-huh. And I'm going to expect me a horse. We can't do nothing with the face like that. <laughs> with the hair. See, okay, so when the whole Ryan Reynolds thing happened, we were at Sebastian. And so we were there for a Christmas party, and some drunk ladies came up. There was smoke all over the place, and we were watching the show. And some drunk ladies came up, and they were up to Danielle, they kept eyeing me. And Danielle was like, hmm, who are they eyeing? And I was like, who do you think they're eyeing? Me. Like, hello. <laughs> hello. Um, and it turned out to be, I was right. They were eyeing me. Because they thought I was Ryan Reynolds. So they went up to Danielle and said, I'm sorry. Okay, I can talk about this. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 wait. And they said, this is Tom right here. And they said, excuse me, no, you couldn't help but notice. Is that Ryan Reynolds? And Danielle looked at me and looked at them. And she said, no, that's not Ryan Reynolds. And they were like, oh, he looks just like Ryan Reynolds. And they're going to this whole thing, right? Two days, no, the next day, I'm coaching a soccer team. And two of the kids that were on the other team, they were like, hey man, anybody ever tell you you look like Ryan Reynolds? And I was like, it must be true now. So they don't, they don't know each other. So I'm telling Danielle, and so now every time I go out in public, I'm like, Ryan Reynolds, right here, right here. Who would you say is your doppelganger? Not that Ryan Reynolds is mine, but. No, nobody can be looking at this. You don't have a doppelganger? You know that guy from Pawn Stars? 
Sí, no, 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 I always get that one. You have a familiar face, you do. That's what it is. It's a very soft, warm, inviting face. Yeah. I get that a lot. Not when he does, <laughs> not, not when he does his eyebrows, though. Then he just looks angry. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you get told you to play? Um, an overweight John Travolta. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so basically, basically just John Travolta. <laughs> Not, not <laughs> current, because he looks like crap, you know what I mean? I can see the resemblance. Yep, especially right here, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> keep my eyes up here, though. No, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? I've been told I look like the new Blue's Clues guy. The which guy? The Blue's Clues. The new Blue's Clues guy. There's another one? There's a new one. Yeah. Somebody Google. He would know. Them. On it, yeah. On it? Alright, let's see it. It's Josh from Blue's Clues. You'll see it and you'll be like, that's Let me see. It's not true. Ah, I can see. You do have the same kind it's of smile. Just it's just because you're a little Asian. Have you seen him? <laughs> <laughs> no. You can see him? <laughs> You do. <laughs> you should be very proud of that, my friend. I don't know. I was told when I was a lot younger, I was told I looked like Adam Chandler with my hat on. Really? And then I was told that, if you guys ever watch, uh, uh, what's that movie where, the, uh, what's his name? Matthew McConaughey's in it. And his most famous line in the movie is, you know what I love about 16 year olds? And they're like, what? And he goes, as you get older, they say the same. Remember that movie? Bruh. Is this Ridgemont Pine? That's so... Fast Times at Ridgemont High? Oh, yeah, 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 I'm pretty sure it's Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Uh, so, the guy with long hair, people say I look a lot like him. I don't know his name right off hand, but... Oh, yeah, that's good. That's good. Even up here. Beautiful, beautiful. I really appreciate it. I gotcha. Uh, I might know it's going to be so happy. Good. Look like him. You guys ever notice that when you get a fresh cut and it goes like, hey? No? Mm -hmm. yeah. Just last time. <laughs> <laughs> I know all about it. What happened? Sad story. Sure you so I, I cut his hair and I gave him like a, a mohawk type, type thing with a nice fade in there. It looked good. I thought it looked great, but she was not a fan because it reminded her of her dad. Is that what she said? Yes. Because oh, wow. uh, you said the most. Not everybody has good taste. Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I found out it was me. It was <laughs> you. <laughs> no, it's okay. But it's all right. I changed it. I cut it again. Yeah. Made it worse. I like it. That's good. I like it. Uh, so we gonna push off? Yeah, I gotta do the razor on the next. Oh, I'm clean up the bottom right there. All right, I'm trusting you. Do you have a product in your hair or your bag? I would like some later. Okay. And then I'm going to put my hat on. <laughs> okay. 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 Did you rub his that would drive me nuts if I was a barber and I cut somebody's hair and then they turned around and put a cap on. I just like... I would, oh my God. to Brian all the time. That's Brian all the time? Habits to Brian all the time. I can kind of understand. Oh, now, how do you deal with it, Brian? Do you find a fellow? What do we do now? I call him out. Say what? And I say, man, at least wait until you go around the corner and put it on. Jeez. <laughs> at least, at least broadcast the cut when you walk out of the shop. Yeah. And then cover it up once you, once you go in there. Well, no, I, I, would, I, I would probably resort to violence. <laughs> okay. I would not say, what? That's awesome. Oh, Isn't that kind of like, so what do you guys have in your field? Because I know that. In real estate, there's certain things, and in, in uh, like fine dining and restaurants and stuff, there are certain things that are considered disrespectful that most a lot of people would not know are disrespectful if they're not in the field. So, what kind of stuff do you guys have in your fields as being barbers 
that are disres- that are considered disrespectful, even though the people might not know it because it wouldn't be it'd be to their niche. You know what I'm saying? Is there anything that, that barbers in general are like, oh no, he didn't. Did he really just do that? It's really just the hat thing. Oh, comparison to another barber. Oh yeah. Like just just take it for what it is. People compare barbers to Yeah, like, oh yeah, this barber back home, he was really good. And I'm over here cutting hair, you're like, really? <laughs> Go back to the <laughs> Go back to Omaha, Timmy. <laughs> Go back to Omaha. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not disrespectful. I think it's just more like, come on, man. Yeah. I, I'm trying here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like an awkward conversation. It is. Like you're kind of like, yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> I bet he was great. There was a, I remember when I was in Miami, I used to have a barber, and my barber was so temperamental. Like, extremely temperamental. What did and you say? So, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so um, and he was an older Cuban guy. You know, he had done celebrities, he had done all this stuff, but he was in a little no-name, hole-in-the-wall bar, but he didn't need anything. So I remember I was sitting there waiting to get cut, and the guy who's getting cut is telling him how to cut his hair. And he's like, no, 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 you gotta do it over here, you gotta do it. Papi, you asked me for this. This is what I give you. No, but my other barber, he was wrong. Your barber was wrong. He sucked. I'm here now. So. And I was like, oh my, wow. And he's just going out. And the kid is just he's probably a little bit older than me, maybe 21, 22. And you see the kid going from ah eh, to oh, just Because, you know, he's one of those old school, everything with a razor. And I was just like, ah, that guy's there. Yeah, I've seen that before. But I can see how somebody brings in a picture and you can't get cut. I mean, there would be no way. Because it would also have to do with the kind of hair you have, too. Because if you have thin hair, you're not gonna look like that vampire dude from that vampire movie, or whatever. It's it important. Yeah, it's important to say that to the barber. You gotta be yeah. like, hey, listen, man. The reality is, you got less hair than that. Part of the job yeah. is telling people what they can and can't do. Right. Like, you want this cut? Oh. Well, that guy has black hair and it's super coarse. You have blonde hair and it's super thin. You can't do that. It's not right. the same. See. I have, one of the things that I always hated about my hair was that I have two palettes right in front. So all the cool hairstyles that everybody went through, especially in the 90s, I couldn't do. So I was like, but you know when my time to shine was? When everybody started doing the, thank you. When everybody started doing the parts, and they would work so hard to get that little arch right there. Mine was natural. When that part, <laughs> when Chandler and Frank came around, I was like, my time to shine. And I had the bowl cut with the little wave thing. And, uh, <laughs> I felt like such a pimp during that time. And then after that, I just went down there. Of course. Huh? Yeah. Now you trying to look like Ron? I love it. That stuff smells so good. What is that? Bay rum. Bay rum? Bay rum aftershave. Bay rum aftershave? Uh, that looks good. You're into my <laughs> okay. I'm gonna fight the thing, dude. All right, we're looking good now. All right, there we go. All right, just oh. so fresh and so clean. So fresh and so clean. So I really appreciate the guys taking the time. We're going to come out here and uh, kind of showcase you guys because I love you guys and the way you've done things as a small business. Um, but in closing, I want to hear your favorite dad jokes. Mm. Age appropriate. Uh, yeah. yeah I'm just kidding. So what is your favorite short dad joke? Um, what do you call a duck that steals? A duck that steals? What? A rubber ducky. <laughs> I'm not you get it? You don't get it, do you? I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite? What do you call a uh, line of... Wow, I messed it up. Never mind. <laughs> I'll come back. I messed it up, yeah. All right, what's your favorite? <laughs> come on, you're a funny guy. Yeah, Bye. Bro. Do the draft one. 
You have a joke about a neck? What's a giraffe's favorite fruit? A nectarine. <laughs> you should have lived with that, man. I didn't remember that. That's pretty good. What's brown and sticky? Okay, hold on. All right. <laughs> age, <laughs> age appropriate. It's a steak. Okay, what brown and sticky? A steak. I don't know. A steak. A steak? Yeah. It's brown. Brown it's and sticky. <laughs> <laughs> Goose. Favorite short joke. What do you call two dudes that really like math? Algebras. Wow. Algebra. Algebras. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <laughs> On that note. <laughs> uh, again, I appreciate you guys showing up in the interview. Then uh if you have any questions, it's Fifth Avenue Barbershop down here in Indian Atlantic, Florida. If you need anything, you got Peter, you got Roger, you got uh, Landon, you got uh, Brian as well. So if you need anything, get out to one of them, all right? See you guys later.